Well, welcome back to Trojan Sports Now. Joining us now is Melanie Davis, head coach of Troy Softball, and here to talk about, you know, a little bit about the upcoming season, but also some exciting upgrades to facilities. So, Coach, thanks so much for joining us today. Well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. First things first, though, we've got to talk about the exciting upgrades because it's the talk of the town. New upgrades coming for the softball facility. Tell us about where they're at and, and all the new things that fans have to look forward to. Well, number one, uh, it, it is really going to be one of the one of, if not the best, facility in the Sun Belt Conference and one of the very best in the Southeast region, which is saying a lot considering we have the SEC and the ACC in our back door. But we cannot tell you in this show all the wonderful things that are going to be a part of that facility. But number one, uh, we wanted to take care of our good fans, and we've corrected the sightline issues. There's grandstand, chairback seating. Uh, there will be a deck area, a deck pavilion as well. Um, and the, the experience for the fans, I think, is going to be fabulous. Um, from the standpoint of what's there for our student athletes, our training center is going to be world class, uh, give our kids every opportunity to be the absolute best they can be. And um, we just can't say enough about what's going on over there and how fast it's happened. You know, construction actually started in October, and uh, they tell us they'll have, we won't have the full facility in terms of the training center on opening day necessarily. Uh, that's still a, a work in progress. But uh, the press box, the playing field, and of course every amenity that's there for the fans will be available um, on opening day. So we are very excited. Well, and if you look behind us, you can kind of see a little bit of a preview of what things are going to look like. It's really shaping up, and, and you can see uh, everybody out there getting some work done even uh, early this morning. Yes, they. Uh, I, I tell you, my staff and a lot of the athletes go by on a regular basis, and uh, it's wonderful to see that live feed and see everything coming together. You can see the, the backstop netting is going up. Uh, we did a walkthrough yesterday where the full artificial turf in the outfield is fully ready. We just would wish they would release us to get out there and do a little work on it, uh, but uh, hopefully that'll come uh, where we can get in a little work before Auburn comes to town along with um, Alabama and six other teams, but um, it's coming together. It's going to be a beautiful facility, and um, I mean, words cannot, cannot express how excited we all are. Well, and you talked about all the, the new amenities that are going to be offered for the student athlete, but talk a little bit about what the players are thinking of this facility. Well, they are uh, just euphoric. Uh, we came back into town right before uh, classes started. We started practice three days before the students reported to begin class. And the first thing we did was a walk through and kind of let them, that was their first time down in the hard hat area to actually see and feel it. And they are... They just can't believe it's, it's actually taken place that we talked about it. Um, it's been on the Chancellor's Initiative since 2010 to happen before 2015. And you know, sometimes those things, uh, right. there are a lot of things that keep you from having that happen. And uh, they are thrilled and have been very appreciative throughout the holidays of toward our donors and to Dr. Hawkins for helping make this happen because those are the keys. The people who came forward with, with uh, monetary donations and then Dr. Hawkins making the commitment to the program. And they are just, uh, Every day that we're out at the city sportsplex, which we appreciate the city for working with us, um, but when we work out there and it's very windy and it's very, we don't have cages really out mm -hmm. there or don't have covered facilities right there in the mist and the cold and the whatnot, this bowl area here we know will be a little bit warmer because it always has been. And to have the indoor training facility, the girls are just counting down the days of when they can get in there and, and fully work at 10 o'clock at night or at 6 a.m. in the morning. and, and uh, follow the trend that our baseball players have set, you know, to be working all the time and get into that top 25 in the preseason poll just like our baseball team did. And you mentioned having to practice off campus with the renovations going on. What kind of challenges has that presented? And you mentioned some of the, the difficulties with the fact of it's, it's not home, it's not the same environment that you're used to, but what have been the, the challenges that your, your team has had to overcome? Well, first and foremost, um, our, our defense has had to adjust to that infield surface out there. And I think that will pay dividends down the line because it will help us know that we have to make the adjustment in a short period of time, make the adjustment to what your playing surface is because uh, a city park is different from from a stadium playing surface and it's also different from our own playing surface here. That being said, um, you know, it also makes you um, uh, appreciate the opportunities to play on more of the collegiate surface there. Um, the other thing is when you're out on that, um, out at the city sportsplex, um, you have a lot of activities going on around you sometimes, you know, with maintenance issues, people coming in, broken pipes, different whatnot. And so I think it really helps us with our focus as well, that there might be things going on out there, things that happen, people come in and out to take lessons and do things. Um, so I think there's great opportunities for focus. Our practices are not closed, and so the kids have to really work on their focus part of things. Um, 
and uh, but I think the the hardest part has been a time management because you you know you think everything's close in Troy, but when you talk about leaving campus and going out to the sportsplex, um, it it does does work you a little bit on time management and uh, safety and that kind of thing. But our girls have done a great job in, in managing those challenges as well. Well, looking back to when the arena was being built, talked about how important that was going to be for recruiting, not just for basketball, but across the campus. Talk a little bit about how this is going to impact recruiting for specifically your program having this beautiful facility. Well, when I remember when we started our fundraising for this event, it was shortly after. We started before, right before John Hartwell came on board, but we had one of our first meetings at homecoming out and got over the hundred thousand dollar mark with our dollars raised and we were in the arena and we had a lot of alumni there we had a lot of donors there and John promised us that he wanted all of our facilities to have the wow factor of Trojan Arena and that has absolutely taken place here and the fact that we are now going to have <clears throat> our wow factor uh, firsthand I can't tell you what it's doing to recruiting it's already paying dividends right now I feel like the class that we signed in the fall was among the strongest in the history of the program as is the verbal class that we now have in the 2015 class um, and it makes a difference when you can bring these recruits down and they can see this taking place and they can see that hey this is taking place now Absolutely. I'm gonna be a part of, of history being made and playing on this artificial turf in the south and and seeing the commitment to the program makes those kids feel that this is where I want to pick for my home um, as opposed to some of those other places. And we have beaten some folks out, some quality programs out on, on recruits in the 2014 and 2015 classes. And um, I, I just think that uh, Dr. Hawkins also told me, he said, Coach, I'm going to have to tell you that once we do this, that's that he's done his part. So the rest <laughs> is up to us. So nothing like some pressure from the man yeah. upstairs and up top, but we're glad to have it because uh, this will really help make a difference as we as we try to sell and tell people more about Troy University and what we have to offer athletically and um, as an educational institution. Absolutely. Now, for fans, the first chance to, to come out and see the team in action and really be able to take part in this new facility uh, is coming up pretty soon, and it's also going to be a big game, not just with the dedication of the field and everything, but also a, a big opponent. Absolutely. Uh, we, we like to talk about and refresh the memory to our girls of two years ago when Auburn came to town uh, and, and we came out on top in that event and uh, our fans really enjoyed that. We had a huge crowd here and uh, it, was, it, it was a great opportunity to uh, beat someone from just up the road, hour and 15 minutes. Um, things will be a little different this time around because Auburn is also starting a new era with their program. Mm -hmm. They've brought in a coach uh, from the West Coast who is won national championships, uh, Clint Myers, and so it's the beginning of the Clint Myers era. Um, but it's also the beginning of the era of Troy University softball in a world-class facility. Uh, so it's going to be kind of a head-to-head -head battle between two uh, really good traditions. And Auburn is, uh, I think they'll be trying to figure out themselves as a new program under new leadership. Our kids will be trying to get used to this facility, but I think as it always is, it's going to be a great battle. Uh, we did move the game time earlier. Um, and that's not in all the publications out there, so I would like to remind the fans that the game will be at 3 o'clock so that we can facilitate the men's and women's basketball games that will follow us that evening. So it's going to be a busy, busy, big day for, for uh, Troy Athletics. We're not going to do the dedication of our field, but uh, we will have a very important guest, J Dr. Hawkins, uh, throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. Uh, and we'll take on those Auburn Tigers on that Thursday to be followed by a week long, weekend long event of softball on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We have the Crimson Tide coming in to finish off the tournament on Sunday. They'll be playing throughout the weekend as will five additional teams from around the country. So a big, big weekend that's really just uh, starts, I believe, um, in just over two weeks, so we're really excited. It's coming up pretty soon, just a couple of weeks, but looking at that first game, what are going to be the, the challenges of getting out there and having that first game on turf and really trying to figure out what exactly, how the ball's going to bounce? Well, they keep telling me, and we did a lot of research before we, before we um, decided to go with the turf, that um, turf really plays truer, and I think that it's going to make, uh, it's going to be a real true, pleasant hop a very easily readable hop. I think the biggest challenges will be when we're not on turf, uh, when we, we have to go elsewhere to practice so that we're you know, ready and prepared to play on grass. Uh, but we have a great relationship with the city. You know, they just built a high school field and we've already talked about you know, sharing facilities with one another. We've always done that, but in particular, we can go down and practice on their grass when we need yeah. to get ready for our tournament after we play on this field. Um, 
the sliding fact of, uh, of sliding catches and so forth in the outfield, I think that's something that our kids just going to have to work on. Um, and, uh, but I do believe that uh, you know, the fact that we've got the dirt infield, it's not going to be that big of a transition because more of our activity will take place right. in the infield as well. This will just make a great place where literally we can play softball out here and so can prospective student athletes, prospects from other teams from the high school ranks and travel ball ranks can come in and play just like they do over at Pace Real Field, play 12 months out of the year. So we're really excited about that. Now looking ahead, uh CorechargeNs.com has been doing some features on some of the players and, and trying to let people know who all's on the team this year. But but looking from a coach's perspective, who are the players that have really stood out to you and, and names that fans really need to keep an eye on? Well, I think that uh, it's hard to to say just uh, one or two without going through about 12 to 14 of our uh, roster of 25. Um, Obviously, we have three seniors returning that we're going to expect great leadership from them, and that's local uh, signee and uh, senior Taylor Smart. Uh, Casey McAllister, who's an all-conference player, uh, returning uh, Sunbelt all-conference player. And then Ebony Wright, who came in as a JUCO transfer um, and you know just brings a lot of value with her. So the three seniors, we're looking for them to, to contribute. But um, I think two of our returning pitchers, um, uh, J.C. Affeld and Sarah Thomas, they're looking really good in the preseason, along with the return of Ashley Rainey, who uh, redshirted last year, drew to a, a shoulder issue. Rainey's looking really good, and our new coming pitcher to the staff um, is Sarah Mock, also a regional kid who's from just an hour up the road in Kenston, Alabama. She's looking really good. So I think on the mound, those four names are, are some that you're going to really want to keep a close watch on. Um, and, you know, I can't – conclude this interview without saying um, uh, and, and putting the monkey on the back, so to speak, of another local kid, uh, Becca Hartley. Um, Becca's a pure freshman who has stepped forward to win the shortstop position, and uh, we're just looking forward to uh, keeping her healthy. Um, we, we say prayers to that effect every night because she is a, a quality shortstop, and we're looking for great things out of her um, up the middle. and. Um, and as well as Erica Davis, who is a junior college transfer from the state who came in from the Mobile region, um, who brings a great bat with her. And I think those two kids uh, are, are helping to make our team much stronger uh, than we've seen over the last couple of years. Well, Coach, we're certainly looking forward to everything that's coming and also with the, the new facility. Just going to be an exciting year for Troy Softball. And again, uh, fans have the opportunity to head out there in just a couple weeks for the Auburn University game. And, uh, of course, you can visit TroyTrojans.com, see the full schedule, and uh, really looking forward to it. So, Coach, thanks so much for joining us here today on Trojan Sports Now. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Coming up on Trojan Sports Now, we'll have a look ahead to further action coming up this week.